A warm welcome to Disky Talk with Luyolo. If you're tuning in for the very first time, I do ask that you please subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you've been a part of this journey, I hope you thoroughly enjoy this episode. So, on today's episode, I discuss all things DSTV Premiership action as I have a pre match analysis of Mamelodi Sundowns versus Amazulu. So, when you have a look then at this encounter, the blue team will represent Mamelodi Sundowns and then the red team will represent Amazul. So, when you have a look at Mamelodi Sundowns then, they do sit um, at the top of the DSTV Premiership. So, they did have um, a bit of a shaky start um, with uh, those, those losses and um, that one draw. But, as of late, they have been picking up uh, the three points and uh, they have been able then to ensure that they do sit on top of the table. So, we have a look at Mamelodi Sundowns then. They do play with the 4-4-2 diamond. So, have a look at it then. In goals, they do start with Ronan Williams and then at left back, the last time out, they did start with Ngobeni. So, we do know that um, Aubrey Mundiba did get a red card against Chipper United. So, he is still serving his suspension. But, you also do have Lila K who can then look then to start on the left-hand side. So, when you do have a look then at um, be it Lake or be it Ngobeni, with regards to this system then with um, the diamond, the fullback then becomes quite key then in offering the width on the left-hand side. So, let's go with Lake. So, with Lake then, he will be quite key then with regards to looking then to offer the width within um, that left wide channel. And then, when you also have a look at it then, the... Um, the, the, the disadvantages then, when you do have a look at uh, Lakay's style of play, is that he does oftentimes um, leave this space vacated, which then teams can make um, use of with regards then to those counter-attacks. So, a lot of the times then, he would be pushed up and at times, Mamelodi Sundown's rest defense hasn't been adequate and hasn't been organized. So, teams then have been able then to successfully then hit them on the counter-attack. So, with Lila K then, he is then a player then who also 1v1 then from a defensive perspective then isn't the strongest so when you do have um, a winger then who's quite skillful and quite quick they can actually get at lila k so from a defensive perspective i would say that's where his weakness is but going forward that's where his strength is so in the system then he does become quite key then with regards to looking then to offer the width and then when you do have a look at the two center backs as the left sided center back you've got Rushin Duruk who I think has been doing well within the art of defense he's been very solid for this Mamelodi Sundown side you do then have Tobi Mvala so do know that um, uh, they have had um, injuries there within that department then Tobi Mvala was brought in but there is also Kranke Kana who can always look to come in and um, offer then his quality and experience within the heart of defense. Moving on then right along, when you have a look at the right back, you've got Kulisum Mutao. So to have a look at Mutao, he does become quite key then in offering the width within that right wide channel. This is a player who's been doing very well this season. Very solid then in those 1v1 defensive situations as I think then um, he's been the best fullback within the league so far. Moving on then right along, at the base of the diamond, you do have Andy Lechali. So, when you have a look at Andy Lechali, then he becomes quite key with regards to how this Mamlodi Sundown side look to build up. He offers them that tactical awareness within the heart of midfield and that solidity as well. So, with how Mamlodi Sundowns would look to build up, a lot of the times is that you'd have Jali looking then to take the ball off Ronan Williams there. And what Jali is very good at then is being able then to bypass the first line of press. So, that is either then with the pass or how he looks to carry the ball and dribble past um, the player then who's looking to press. Also very good then from these deep pockets of space with regards to playing that diagonal ball into his fullback. So in build-up phase, maybe the fullbacks would be situated in those deep wide uh, pockets of space where they're looking to offer the width and looking to offer the outlet with regards to ensuring that sundowns have angles of progression with regards to getting out from um, the build-up phase. So Jali then is able to play that pass. He's able to play that pass. Also very good at playing then those penetrative passes into midfield where then he's able to take his team out of build-up phase into consolidation phase. Within this part of the area, he becomes quite key then with regards to offering them um, that tactical awareness, especially considering that he forms um, uh, a key part of the rest defense. So whenever then Sundowns would be pushed up and um, you'd have the wing backs there, he becomes quite key in that regard. Moving on then right along, when you do have a look at the rest of the diamond, on the left-hand side, you've got Mbule. 
you've got um, Kulisi, and then you've got um, Tembazwane would go there, and then you would have um, Alende, and then you would have Shalile, then you'd have them pushed up. So when you do have a look at Mamelodi Sundown's offensive scheme, um, that is what you pretty much see. So it does become a 2-3-5, where then you've got the two centre-backs, where you'd have Rushin Duruk, you'd have Mvala, you'd have Jali sitting there within the heart of midfield, and then you'd have Mbule, and then you would have Mkulisi there as well. Then you would have Zwane looking to join then the forward line, and then that's what it would look like. So that is the picture then that you would see from Mamelodi Sundowns as they will be dominating ball possession. They will dominate proceedings. So that's the picture that you will see for very good part of the encounter. So when you do have a look at it then with regards to how they look to go about things. So because then within the diamond, you've got four midfielders, it does also offer you that numerical superiority, especially when you come up against a midfield three, which then that is what Amazulu do. They come up with that midfield three. So that is where then Mamelodi Sundowns then will institute that numerical superiority. That is when then they will have that dominance. When you do have a look at the key players then, you do have Mkulisi, who becomes quite key then with regards to offering you that control, that quality within the heart of midfield. You do then also have Mbule as well, as um, when you do have the midfield of Mbule and Mkulisi, you are looking at a team then that will have a lot of um, possession and a lot of dominance within the heart of midfield with regards to how they control the game and how they look to progress the ball within the final third. With Mbule, he also then does have a goal in him, does have those penetrative passes, does offer you assists, and he offers you goals as well well up front you do have Peter Shalile who's been doing very well currently sits on six goals and he does sit at the top of um, the DSTV Premiership goal scoring standing so that is Mamelodi Sundowns with regards to how they'll be looking to go about things so with the two fullbacks looking to offer the width within the wide areas so that is Lake that is Kuliso Mutao then you'd have those two number eights who would then be looking then to occupy those half spaces like that. They do also ensure that they do um, offer cover for the two fullbacks, especially then within these pockets of space. If anything happens when they do look to lose the ball, with regards to the arrest defense, um, that is what it would look like. So you are looking at um, five players behind the ball at all times. So whenever the ball is there, you are constantly looking at five players behind the ball. Whenever then uh, Mamelodi Sundowns lose it, they are looking to counter-press and win the ball back. If not, then they do become quite reliant then on their rest defense with regards to how then they prepare for adversity and being able then to combat those counter-attacking opportunities from Amazulu. So when you do have a look at Sundowns, their rest defense at times hasn't been quite organized because we have seen them concede um, a goal then from... Um, a counter-attacking situation, which is against TS Galaxy. We have also seen them concede opportunities where then the opposition doesn't manage then to finish, but they would be able to successfully then um, be quite efficient with those offensive transitions and looking to counter-attack this Mamelodi Sundown side. It would then take a save or it would take a last-ditch tackle. So that is something that they could look to improve with regards then to how organized they become then with their rest defense without the ball. But when you do have a look at this Mamelodi Sundown side, we do know that they've got so many options. They do have Savrida, who can always come off the bench and uh, make an impact. You do have Neo Mayema. You do have Serino if he is, he is fully fit. You do also have Kapinga as well, who can always look to come off the bench. Nasir as well, if he is fully fit. And I did mention then that you've got uh, Alende, you've got Zwane, you've got Shalile. So when you do have a look at this Mamlodi Sundown side, they do have the edge coming into this one with regards to the fact that they've got then that qualitative superiority and they do institute that numerical superiority with regards to their central overloads whenever then they would have the form. Sometimes you would see wide overloads as well where then you would see that picture and you would see those wide rotations as well. However, when you do move on then right along, Let's move on then and have a look at Amazulu. So when you have a look at Amazulu, this is a side then who started off really well. We are at the top of the standings. Let's just erase that just so we make it clear. So when you do have a look at Amazulu then, they started off quite well within the DSTV Premiership. At some point, they were at um, the top of the table. However, in the past couple of games, they have been struggling and they haven't been getting the results. However, let's have a look at the personality. So, we do know that the last time out, they did lose 2-1 at home against Chipper United. In goals then, 
you do have Uveli Moto, and then the right side at centre back, you do have Kumede, you do have Temlas Kakane, and then the left side at centre back, you have Mpasele. But there is also Abu Bakar Mubara, who, when he is fit, he does become quite key with regards to how then they're looking then to build up from the back. This is a centre back who is press resistant, very comfortable on the ball, plays those line breaking passes as well. Then at left back, you do have Rian Hanamum. So when you do have a look at Amazulu, they do look to build up from deep, but because they'll be coming up against Mamlodi Sundowns, who look to press high up. Um, I think Amazulu could look then to maybe bypass the first line of pressure and look then to play from the second ball. So with the two fullbacks, then they become quite key with regards to offering them the, with the width, especially considering that Amazulu play with three strikers. So they become quite key in offering them the width. At times, the relationship between the two fullbacks is that when ball side fullback has it, the far side fullback would be looking to tuck in to make it a back three. At times, both do look to push up and offer the width. When it is on the right hand side, sometimes you will see him, Hanamoub, tucking in and making it as a third centre back. But quite essential then with regards to offering the width for this Amazulu side. Moving on then within the art of midfield, you do have Mahaula, who I think has been one of their best players. He does look to protect their back four. Very comfortable with regards to progressing the ball from deep pockets of space and looking to be quite key then in build up phase. And a player then who does also find those penetrative passes in between the lines. Moving on then right along. You do have George Malaga, and then you've got Keegan Buchanan, who form uh, a midfield three. With Keegan Buchanan, he does take up that deep laying playmaker role. Player then who's got great range of passing, and a player then who does offer a lot of um, control and a lot of quality for this Amazulu side, especially then when he does take it within those deep pockets of space within the opposition half, is a player who can find those penetrative passes. He can also play that dodge pass as well. And also then whenever he does play those diagonals, looking to stretch the opposition. We have seen that he is becoming quite good then at taking shots from range as well. So that is something that he's added to his skill set that could look then to trouble Mamlodi Sundowns. We have a look at the front three then. The last time out, they did start then with Zuma. They started with Quem. And then you had Machoro. So, like I did mention, with this Amazulu side, they do play with the front three, uh, a floating fluid front three with regards to positional rotations and um, the standard positioning as how then they would be looking then to occupy the opposition back line. So, they are constantly rotating and um, you don't necessarily have one would be fixated to one position, but the one who would be central most times would be Quem. You also do have Mtuli if he is fully fit. You also have Mhango who can come off the left, who can look then to be also be a menace as well. So when you do have a look at it then, Quem becomes quite key with regards to how he looks to occupy the two centre-backs. Also that presence that he does offer then within the box. So that is Amazulu then in possession of the ball and what they would look like. With regards to their rest defence, very similar to Mamlodi Sundowns, where they'll have a 2-3-5 offensive scheme. Then they'll have a 2-3 rest defense block, where then you do have those three midfielders, the 2-8s and Malaga and Buchanan as well. But because they are playing against Mamlodi Sundowns, I think they could be a bit more conservative, where then if uh, ball side fullback has it, far side fullback would actually be looking to tuck in. That then would ensure that they've got more numbers behind the ball. So whenever they do lose it and Mamlodi Sundowns do look then to... Um, counter-attack Amazulu as they do have speed themselves, then they always then can look to prepare for that situation because then they'd have at least six players behind the ball. Then you can also have one of the midfielders looking to break in and add numbers. Whenever they lose it, then they are looking then to obviously go back. With regards to what they would look like um, without the ball, so because I think Mamlodi Sundowns will dominate proceedings, I think a picture that we could very well see then within this DSTV Premiership encounter is Amazulu having to sit within a mid-block and at times sit in a deep block, which then becomes pretty much um, a 4-5-1. And then the ask then on these two guys who play in these wide areas becomes a lot because then naturally there would be strikers, but then they would have to then ensure that they are able to track these fullbacks, you know. So that is what you could see then where the fullbacks are looking to pin then the opposition wingers because then they'd have to track back. If not, then Mamlodi Sundowns could look to make use of um, the space out wide. And um, yeah, so I do see then this Mamlodi Sundown side pinning this Amazulu side back with regards to how deep they can get, especially considering that Mamlodi Sundowns can institute those um, overloads within the heart of midfield. Even in those wide areas, they do have those wide rotations and those positional rotations as well, as they are a side that look then to dominate proceedings from a ball possession perspective. Also a side then um, that is quite um, reliant and quite... Um, 
dependent on positional play with regards to the movement and how dynamic their players can be in possession of the ball. When you do have a look at this Mamlori Sundown side, a key player will be Peter Shalile coming up into this one. When you do have a look at Amazulu, a key player will be Mahaula within the heart of midfield with regards to then how he looks to lead his team and ensure then that um, within the heart of midfield, they can look to combat as it will be a tactical battle and will be a midfield battle. However, I do see Mamlori Sundowns winning this game 3-1 as I do think they have more poor possession and uh, they will be able to create those chances and um, they will be able then to penetrate within the final third. With Amazulu, whenever then they do have opportunities to counter-attack, they will be then looking then to ensure that they're quite effective. However, I think it ends 3-1 in favor of Mamelodi Sundowns against Amazulu at home. Do let me know how does this one end between Mamelodi Sundowns and Amazulu. Thank you very much for tuning in to yet another special episode of Disky Talk with Liolo. Signing out. <laughs>